Hey everybody, it's uh, your favorite small time YouTuber, Brad, here out in the Montana garage. And uh, it is finally a nice sunny spring day here in Montana. And that means I can paint some stuff. We're gonna start with the roll bar. It's not gonna be easy and it's not gonna be fun, but uh, you know, it's gotta get done. So let's get to it. All right, I got started without you guys. I've done a few small tasks, nothing real crazy, but I got most of the car cleaned out. I still have to like vacuum it and whatnot, but there's uh, more sanding to be done. So we'll take care of that before we clean it out anymore. I got most of the truck cleaned out. I drained my compressor. I drained all my airlines, checked my filter out. So all that stuff's ready to roll. I stopped by Harbor Freight this morning and I bought this little tiny kind of touch up paint gun. And, uh, I'm gonna use that up here to get, try to get the back part of this roll bar. I was gonna take my glass out, but I don't think I'm gonna have time to remove the glass and get the glass put back in and still be ready for Rocky Mountain Race Week. So I'm gonna to try to just leave the glass in. I'm gonna get new glass in this thing eventually, but it may not happen right away. So uh, we'll try to paint this. It's just really tight back here. I thought that little gun might help. And then I also got this universal paint cup system also from Harbor Freight. So kind of cheap probably, but uh, we'll see if it works. The biggest reason I got this is uh, obviously it's nice to have. I think a lot of people use either that or probably some better ones, but it's obviously easier for cleaning and whatnot because you don't have to clean the cup out. You just, they're disposable. They have a liner. The reason I really got it for today is it, you can spray with the gun upside down and you can't do that with the regular paint cup because it has a vent in it. So I'm going to have to spray, turn the gun every which way and every other which way to try to get at the top of the bars and the edge of the bars and all that stuff. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, next step, mix some paint. So I'm gonna use, once again, SPI Epoxy Primer and it has an activator. Now that's the same stuff I painted the firewall with. And if you guys have been around a while, you know that did not go well um, for the first five or 10 times. But eventually I finally got it and uh, it turns out I kind of had a bad batch of product, I guess. But uh, I'm still, the, the company took care of me. They sent me some more product and uh, were very helpful on the phone. So I'm not like totally uh, against them or mad at them or whatnot. So I have some of the product. I, it, I think it's a good quality product. Everybody seems to like it. So I'm gonna try it again. You know, like I said, it finally ended up working out. I think it is a little finicky to spray and I'm not an expert. So we'll see how it all shakes out. But uh, I think that's kind of the finish I want on it. I thought about using just some of this VHT roll bar and chassis, and that's kind of how I was gonna go with it first. But they have a gloss one and I think it's too gloss and they have a flat one and it's a little flatter than I liked. And I think, you know, this is kind of the sheen I would like. So I'm gonna just roll with that. It is gonna be a little tougher, I think, to get the paint gun in places than the little spray can. But uh, like I said, I got the little one for the tough spots and we'll see how it goes. So I have a ton of prep work to do still. I'm not by any means ready to spray this stuff, but they say you wanna let it induce for like four hours, which means induce is after you mix it, you let it sit basically for maximum UV protection or so it doesn't fade in the sunlight. It's not really designed to be a top coat, but it can be used as a top coat. As you can see, that's what I'm doing there. But most of that stuff is never gonna see the sun. Obviously we're gonna see a little bit of sunshine through the windows. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the, you know, induce thing. So I'm gonna get this mixed and then do all my sanding and masking and all my other prep work um, for a few hours and then hopefully this stuff will have worked its magic and be ready to roll. All right, once again, I gotta just say, I'm not an expert at this. I'm just kinda, I'm not making it up as I go. I've done it before. I still gotta like, I look in the book and see what I'm supposed to do. And I, I haven't done it enough to just come out here and do it. You know what I mean? So uh, watch and follow along, but uh, maybe figure out your own process so that you're doing it right in case I'm not. The first problem I have is I never know how much to mix. This little disposable paint cup holds 20 ounces, which I would guess is probably enough to do that roll bar. I'm gonna mix it in this cup and it holds 28, so that'll give me a few extra ounces. So I have some to put in that little detail gun and then just a little extra if I need it. And hopefully I'm right and that's gonna be enough. And I guess if not, we'll find out and mix more. Kinda of screws me up because I gotta do the induced thing, but uh, fingers crossed that's plenty. So uh, mixy mixy. All right, so we got her all mixed up. Uh, as you saw, the and it says this right in the instructions, the epoxy solids settle to the bottom, so you gotta be really careful to mix it up really well. Hopefully you saw in the time lapse where I stuck it out and there was like big gobs and goops. I think that's normal. The stuff is less than a year old. It has been stored inside, you know, temperature controlled, all that stuff. Uh, we got her all stirred out of there, and these are the two parts mixed together. So now we wait, well, 
it waits. I got stuff to do. So back over the car and the first thing I'm doing, and I have no idea if you guys are gonna be able to see any of this, but see the welding spatter on the roll bar in a few different spots. But like there's a bunch right in here, some right here. And uh, the other side had quite a bit. And the first thing I'm doing is kind of trying to get rid of most of that. So you can see over here, if you can see, most of that's gone. So I'll give you guys Again, something probably you guys already know, but a lot of times this welding spatter, because it's just spatter, just like if you don't, you know, prep your weld right and get enough heat or whatnot, it, they don't, it doesn't stick very well. This welding spatter a lot of time is just kind of like stuck on there. Some of the bigger ones like that one, I may have to get the chisel or the hammer out, but some of the lower ones, you can just kind of scrape off there. Like, see, there was one there and now it's gone. This one might be too big. So I'll have to use two hands and a hammer, but a hammer and a chisel, and you can pop those off there. But I usually just kind of come along and try to get these little ones off like this. This isn't a very good example, I guess, because most of them aren't coming off by hand. Got one of those. Those ones just came off. So I'll grab the hammer. And it's hard to do, you know, I'll, maybe I'll set the camera up, but basically I'm just going to, you know, grab the hammer and bang, bang right there and knock some of these off and then we'll come back and see what it looks like when we're done. So I lied to you, sorry, I didn't set the camera up, but after just a couple minutes of uh, scraping and a little bit of hammering with that little chisel, like I said, pretty much all that welding spatter is gone. So we'll obviously hit this with some sandpaper again. There's kind of some little, you can kind of see where they were sometimes, even though the bump is gone. But uh, that side's good. I got a little bit more on this side, so we're looking pretty good as far as weld spatter goes. The only place we still have some, I scraped around up here too, but there's just some right at the very top I can't get. You only know it's there if you rub your hands up there. You can't see it either from the front or the back. So, so if you're uh, ever riding with me, just don't rub your hand up there and then you won't know that's there. And if you don't tell anybody, I won't tell anybody. Deal? All right, next step sand the bars most of them i sanded and kind of prepped before i put it together this bar i forgot to do that too so i'll do that one a little better but i'm going to go over the whole thing probably with the da where i can and then the little just like a little scotch bright tube or something get it all sanded and then we will probably mask first because we're going to be going in and out of here and touching stuff and whatnot and then we will wax and degrease and then someday we'll spray the primer paint epoxy whatever it is got these areas here too on each side where the roll bar comes out of the floor and then also we got the spot where the roll bar hits the outrigger down there now I don't know technically what the right way to do all of this is as far as you know repainting this and not getting paint I'm not gonna be too fancy or special about it I'm going to sand the bar like I did I'm gonna scuff up the paint around the area that's try to kind of feather it and then I don't know, I'm just gonna paint it. If a little more black gets on there, it'll either stick or won't stick, or maybe it'll look goofy, but it's it's basically under the car. So I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time, you know, masking and feathering. I mean, I don't even really know the right way to do it. So I'm just gonna do it like that. I'm gonna do it the wrong way on purpose. That way I don't have to pretend like I knew what I was doing and having it fail anyway. So that's my story there. <sighs> Progress report. Everything is either DA sanded or hand sanded to hopefully good enough of a standard. Uh, that's what I'm going for is good enough. Hopefully the epoxy will stick good enough. Uh, so the bar is all done. Outrigger's down there. I showed you the little uh, roll bar where it sticks through the frame on the other side and in the trunk. And then there's a little spot where I did the battery box onto the frame, did some welding down there. So all that stuff is uh, kind of sanded-ish, hopefully good enough to be painted. So next step is we've got to blow everything off and then vacuum everything up really good. Probably do that, you know, blow, vacuum, blow, vacuum, blow, vacuum, suck and blow, suck. I talked about suck and blow in another video. Anyways, I don't know where I went with that. And then we'll come up with a plan for masking. And that is not going to be the fun part for sure. We'll 
Well, now I suppose I should get some of this dust and gunk off the floor because I'm going to be spraying down here and we don't need to be kicking all that dust up. So you all know there's only one really good way to do that, right? The old hand broom on the knees. I don't know why everybody gives me a hard time about this. I just want it clean. After a couple more rounds of suck and blow, I think we got uh, mostly cleaned out. I blew the floor off. I vacuumed in here, blew it all out again. Anyways, like I said, a couple more rounds of suck and blow. I think it's pretty clean. So now we have to come up with a plan for masking. And like I said, that is not going to be the fun part. I'm not going to worry too much about getting black epoxy on my black epoxy that's already here. So I'm not going to mask off the floors and the inner doors or the lid. But I do have to mask off the glass. I'm going to leave these open because uh, that will leave me a little extra room to get in there. So I got to mask off this glass a little bit out here. I was going to remove the back glass because uh, I'm getting new glass anyways, but I've kind of realized I may not have time or the funds to get the new glass before Rocky Mountain Race Week if I'm still going to make that. So I'm not going to, I don't want to take the window out if I'm just going to put the same window back in. So I'm going to leave it and uh, I may have already said this, but I got a smaller gun to try to paint those. Maybe you already said all of that. I don't know what I'm doing. So it's time to figure out some masking. And uh, yeah, I'm not really sure exactly how to go about that. So here's my poor attempt of masking the areas that needed masked. I'm sure if somebody knew what they were doing, they could have done it a lot faster and probably used less tape and paper, but whatever. I covered up what I think I need to cover up. Um, see, I just kind of built a big plastic wall here so no overspray can get on that stuff. Everything that's not covered, I guess I'm not worried about. I am going to blow everything off one more time, then wipe on and wipe off some wax and grease remover, and then that has to sit and evaporate and dry for a little bit, and I have to run and talk to a guy about a job, so I'm going to try to get it wiped on, wiped off, go do what I got to do. Hopefully when I come back, I can just spray it. See you in a little bit. It is the same day, a couple hours later. Even though it looks like it might be a little more cleaned up, I went ahead and shaved because like I said, I was going to talk to somebody about a job. Thought I'd try to look a little bit less homeless. We'll see if it worked out. Anywho, I'm back in the shop and I think I'm ready to start spraying primer. Everything's masked. I covered up a couple more things. Put some cardboard under here to kind of block some of what I got going on. I cleaned up this little gun I bought. It says you gotta clean it first. Got my other gun kind of ready. Looked at this little uh, disposable cup kit. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do, I got a fan in the window, open up another window. I'm not gonna put my paint booth walls down. Hopefully most of the overspray will stay inside the car, but I kind of covered up what I didn't want overspray on. So hopefully it's all gonna work out. The first thing I'll do is pour a little primer in this little guy and see if it's even gonna work. The tip is uh, way smaller than it's supposed to be, but I'm hoping that this works you know, just to kind of get, like I said, that back window. And maybe if there's less overspray and it's just a little finer pattern, maybe I can spray the underneath stuff with this and get less primer on stuff that I don't want it on. I don't know. It's all, that all, that stuff's all underneath the car. So whatever it is, what it is. But I'm still going to try to obviously make it look the best I can. So let me get, I got to get my hose set up. Probably should put some more clothes and a mask on and squirt, squirt. Well, let's see if we can figure out how this thing works. I uh, put my sweatshirt on. Go abs, even though, uh. They disappointed me and lost in the first round of the playoffs, but uh, oh well, now I got more time to work on my car. All right, let's see what we got here. I kinda like that right how it is. Hmm, where to start? I think I will start, uh, I should probably, get my other gun ready, but I'm gonna start with this little guy. Just seeing what it does. Oop, hold on, out of the control. I don't know if you guys are gonna see anything at all. Can you see this right here? Probably until I get right in the way you can. I need the big one. I gotta get upside down, I guess. First coat should be pretty light from what I remember with this stuff. All right, I don't necessarily think you know that the size of this gun is helping me out in this situation. So, because I got this one, I'm going to go do the 
back window because that's kind of what I really got it for. And then, I don't know, I'll do all this. Well, I can't do that. I don't see, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'll go ahead and do the other front one. I don't think I can do the, the outriggers where the roll bar comes through the floor because I pretty much have to be upside down probably. And then we'll do the stuff in the back window. I'll bring you back at some point. I did what I could with the little gun. Now we got the big boy out and I think I got it adjusted somewhere as close. So we'll start seeing what happens with this thing. Like I said, trying to go kind of light with the first coat. I think that's the secret to success with this stuff. Get my door off. All right, I don't know how to show you guys any of this stuff. I used to be able to tip the gun upside down. kind of light coat on it looks a little textury but i think that's just because it's almost like a mist coat but i think we're supposed to go pretty light with this first one so i'm gonna let this set for a half hour or so get tacky because uh, i can see it would be very easy to get nothing but runs all over this thing because it's hard to get you know get here without getting more there and that kind of thing so uh we'll let her sit a little bit and hope for the best it's about a half hour later and uh leave it to me to forget things of course I almost forgot my door bars. I had to sand them and then put uh, wax and grease remover on them. So now those got to sit for like a half hour. So I'm just going to be a couple coats behind on these, I guess. And the other thing I forgot is I need to sneak pack this plastic and just give a little squirt squirt to these things sticking out the floor. So I'll get the first coat on them, second coat on this, and then we'll wait again. And then we'll come out and do the last coat on this and the first coat on that. and. I got it all screwed up, but we'll get there eventually. I definitely don't know what the hell I'm doing here. I got a few spots with some runs in it for sure. And there is a few spots with some of that weird ass, uh, almost, it's not really fish eyes, it's just some sort of reaction like I was getting on the firewall. It is what it is, it's probably gonna be good enough. I'll let her dry and see if we need another coat. There's still a few spots like against the edge of the body here and at the top, I, I really can't get it all. So we'll let it dry and see how it looks if I got it run some with a brush up there or maybe you won't be able to notice. I don't know. Not super stoked how it's going, but at least it'll be done. It's a couple hours later, back out in the shop. I let it sit for a while, I came back out, got rid of the last of my epoxy with a final coat. I didn't get everything, another coat, but I got all the spots. I focused kind of on the spots that were a little bit light and uh, you know, I got most of it. And after getting all done, I can finally say that I am not at all happy with how this turned out. I should have went with my gut and just painted it either with a, a paint can, maybe a spray can wouldn't have been any better. Cause the problem is you can't get next to the you know, next to the side of the car or the lid or back by the window. I thought I could get in there with that smaller paint gun, but 
you really can't i mean you can't there's still like a line at the top and kind of on the side where you can't get in there and uh, i know now why people just paint these things with a paintbrush a lot of times i've seen a lot of videos and that's what they do and i should have just done that but i didn't really want to do that i thought oh, i got all the stuff let's just paint it but uh yeah it's not terrible but it's not good and uh i'm leaving for a week tomorrow i'm probably just gonna leave it as is and then when i get back in a week i'm gonna look at it and i'm gonna decide if i'm gonna leave it or if i'm gonna sand it down and then just maybe just paint it with a brush if it looks that bad i mean it's not terrible but it is it's it's far from good uh let's take a look all right so first thing you see is just back there in that corner you can see i just could not get paint right there you know, back right where it bends and on top it's just light and uh you know then you try to force it in there then you end up with runs i got a run down below down there same thing up at the very top you know i finally got it mostly where you can't see the line but I kept dragging the hose or hitting my foot on here down here. So there's a couple little funky spots. You know, you gotta crawl under there 8,000 times. You got a hose and then the paint gun has, of course, the filter and everything on it. And you come shooting across and you bang the paint gun into the, ex the other bar that you just painted. I tried to force some up in there and I, I finally got that pretty good, but created a big run right there. I don't know if you can see it right there-ish. So, and I don't know, I mean, hopefully, it's gonna dry and I'm gonna come look at it and be like, it is what it is, just an old race car. But I don't know, I'm kind of finicky about some of this stuff. So I just wish, the biggest part is I wasted a whole freaking day doing this and I could have just, I should have just freaking painted it with a paintbrush and called it good. Uh, then my door bars, I almost forgot about them and then I painted them. Uh, and this one turned out pretty good. This one, look at this. You probably can't, I don't know if you can see it on there. All sorts of goofy stuff there. Uh, what happened here is I had my paint gun. Uh, I set the pattern. I came in, I adjusted the pattern so that it would go across, right? You know, your fan. So, But what I forgot is I had just turned it in there to try to do something. So when I came out here and I turned it, I turned it back the other way. And so my fan was like this. And so I, you know, pulled the old trigger and just piled it up on there, going straight down in the line until, you know, about there I figured it out. But look at those. So this door bar for sure is going to get sanded down and resprayed. Anyways, lesson learned. Uh, hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. If you're doing a roll bar and you don't really know how to paint or primer or whatever, maybe just use a brush. I don't know. I'm sure there's lots of guys out there that uh, could make it work. I tried and I failed, but uh, hey, that's what it is. I learned my lesson and I'll keep trying. So I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know in the future if it stays or if it goes. All right, I am back and it is indeed, believe it or not, it is the future. So not only do I build cool cars out here in the Montana garage, I also dabble in time travel. Don't believe me? Hold on, I'll prove it. Welcome to the future. And as you can see, some things have changed. We've got sheetrock and insulation in the shop. The car is done-ish, she's a driver. And uh, well, that's not all that's changed. The finish on the roll bar, mm. That also changed. If you're not up to speed to how we got to this point in the future with the driver, Dunnish Bare Metal 55, go ahead and explore around the old Montana Grudge YouTube channel and give some other videos a look-see. As I mentioned back in the past, I wasn't happy with how the roll bar turned out when I sprayed it with the SPI Epoxy. Now, it's not the SPI Epoxy's fault. I'm not blaming it on them. It was my fault. I just did a crappy job of spraying it or applying it or putting it on. It looked not so good. So I ended up sanding it all down and respraying it. I must have figured that I'd bored you guys enough with roll bar stuff because I didn't take any footage of it. I was just trying to get it done, I guess. But what I did this time, I said I sanded it all down and this time I just sprayed it with VHT roll bar and chassis paint. I mean, my first clue that I should have used this was the fact that it says roll bar right on the can. I think the main reason that it turned out better this time is just using the spray can. The, the can is smaller than the gun and the filter and the hose and it's just more maneuverable to get in on the tight spots like next to the you know the door panels and up against the where the headline would be and all the nooks and crannies so it was just easier less hassle i guess and it just turned out way better so we'll start by taking a peek back here now even though i said it was easier to get in all the spots look i still could not get paint on um, these back bars back in front of the back window. I just couldn't get the can in there. I even tried on this side to brush some paint on there and uh, I decided that looked worse, so I just left it. And now that the car is bare metal, I may just leave. I don't mind that bare metal kind of look going up like that and then fading to black. I may actually sand some of the black paint off on the inside so it's more even. Or when I change the glass out, you know, and I pull the glass out of there, I'll probably just squirt, squirt some black on there and uh, then it'll all be black and that'll probably be better than the bare metal. 
peek on the inside here I got the door bars in you can see that thing is nice and shiny I don't even have it all scratched up yet there are some scratches on the roll bar from trying to putting the seat in and out and stuff like that and uh, whatever that's gonna happen right cuz I'm gonna use the car and just the rest of it it all just turned out pretty good I don't really have any runs anywhere there's it's not perfect by any means there's some little flakes and specks and dirt from you know painting in a not super clean environment but overall I am very happy with how it turned out I don't know you guys can't see it because it's black on black but trust me it's much better this time. So this simple little paint the roll bar project ended up being quite a bit more work than I thought it was going to be, especially since I ended up having to do it twice. But like I said, I'm glad I did it the second time because it turned out much, much nicer. Uh, let me know if you guys got any paint the roll bar horror stories or if you guys just use a paintbrush or a paint can or how you guys have done it and how it's worked out for you. I'd just be curious to see how everybody else is doing this. Most of the videos and stuff I saw when I was Googling it, people were just painting it with the brush because that seems like the easy way to do it. And it probably would have been fine. I did it the hard way, as usual. That should be the motto of the Montana Garage. We do it the hard way, and we do it three or four times. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend. And don't forget, we've started doing Montana Garage Mondays, where I'm live from out here in the Montana Garage, Monday nights, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Maybe I'll see you then. Ooh, shiny.